Welcome to A Holistic Perspective, a deeper look at why we should consider the holistic way while maintaining our own health. I'm Cindy Gill, owner and proprietor of Silly Goose Ranch Herbals and Sign Cleaning LLC of St. Augustine, Florida. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be discussing the holistic perspective to healthcare. Firstly, there are four aspects to health that should be considered anytime you're not feeling 100%. Emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, and physical health. It is my belief, taught to me by Emily Ruff with the Florida School of Holistic Living in Orlando, that we must evaluate all four of these aspects in order to get a full and complete picture of the factors affecting a balanced state of wellness. Emotional health. How are you feeling? Happy? Joyful? Balanced? Or sad? Angry? And frustrated? How could this be affecting you and other aspects of your life? Your mental health. How are you thinking? Are you thinking clearly? Are you thinking rationally? Are you stuck in a thought cycle that is creating unnecessary stress in your life? Spiritual health. Do you have a connection with something greater than yourself? Do you feel you belong to a community? Are you at peace with your spirituality? Physical health. Certainly not least. When one of the other three aspects of health is allowed to remain out of balance for too long, it will begin to demonstrate itself through a physical imbalance. So it's important that we check the whole self, mind, body, and spirit, to be sure that our ailments are not originating from an emotional, mental, or spiritual place before, during, and while treating physical symptoms. Because treating the physical symptoms alone may not eliminate the problem, just change it. There are also four beliefs central to the practice of holistic health. First is the belief in our body's innate ability to heal. Your body's ability to heal itself is greater than anyone has ever permitted you to believe. Every physiological function of our body is working toward optimal wellness. By lending your intention and energy to this belief, you give your support to those healing processes of the body. The second belief is that each body is a unique individual, and as such, we have a unique healthcare need. There is not a one-size-fits-all herbal regimen. It's quite contrary to the modern pharmacy, which treats illnesses and diseases with the same therapies in every individual. Instead, in herbalism, each individual carries a unique health history, constitution, and life experience. That influences their experiences of illness and their path to wellness. Third is the belief in our own intuition. Albert Einstein said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Our intuition guides us to the treatment that resonates most with our highest good. Trust your inner voice. Fourth is the belief in your personal responsibility for health. It is each of our responsibility for our own health and our daily wellness choices and commitments need to give us a foundation for success on the journey toward greater health. There are four practices for maintaining wellness daily. Exercise, sleep, stress management, and nutrition. Exercise. We're all familiar with the benefits of exercise. Moving our body strengthens our heart, oxygenates our cells and tissues, strengthens our muscles, and increases our flexibility. Movement also allows energy to move through our body, dissipating areas of stagnation. Commit to regular exercise at least three times a week, 20 to 30 minutes a session. Remember, exercise is more than just visiting the gym. It can be a vigorous walk through a nature park, a swim, yoga, or just playing with your dog. 
Anything to get your blood pumping and your body moving. Sleep. Both our body and our brain need sleep to function at their optimal level. Each of us has a unique sleep need based on a general state of health, constitution, and other life factors. I consider your sleep routine one of the most important aspects to ensure your quality sleep. Try to go to bed and wake up at a similar time each day to establish a routine in your sleep. Setting is also very important. Be sure to sleep in a dark, quiet room to ensure quality of sleep, as light and sound can affect certain physiological functions during REM. Be mindful of the activities you do just before bedtime. I like to take 90 minutes to two hours before bedtime to begin winding down, dimming the lights, shutting down devices, and stopping even reading. Anything that is very stimulating to the mind and makes it harder to fall asleep. If you like to watch TV in the evening, maybe choose a nature show like Blue Planet or Earth at Night, something that's a little less engaging and stimulating, background stuff, so that you really are winding down for bed. It's important that you're ready to sleep when you go to sleep. Observe your caffeine intake and sugar intake throughout the day, making sure you give yourself enough time for a good restful sleep. Stress management. Managing our stress is one of the key aspects of experiencing health and radiance every day. Chronic stress is implicated in the development of serious chronic illness. The experience of stress in our lives is experienced in our bodies and in the nervous system, but affects all systems of the body. We can't always prevent or avoid stress, but we can find tools and practices to manage it in our daily lives. I find breathing, yoga, playing with my animals, foot baths, massage, flower essences, meditation, and activities where I create something are all very useful tools that I use to manage my stress. Identify the practices that help you manage your stress and commit to employing them daily as stress arises. Nutrition. What we eat and what we don't eat both play a pivotal role in our experience of wellness. Hippocrates said, may our food be our medicine and our medicine our food. To take this lesson to heart, we must examine where our food comes from and also how we can incorporate herbs and spices into the foods we prepare daily to enhance our overall wellness. Treating symptoms by substituting herbs for pharmaceuticals is operating with the mindset of allopathic medicine. Holistic herbalism looks at the root of the imbalance while maintaining that each person has a different constitution. Thus, what works for one person may not be effective or even appropriate for another. So why should we consider the holistic approach to healthcare? I believe prevention is the number one cure. When we consider health, our own responsibility, it becomes essential to get ahead of illness, to see it coming, or better still, prevent any symptoms from ever manifesting. By tuning into your mind and body, you can begin to notice signals. For example, just a few years ago, I discovered that I had a food intolerance to one of my all-time favorite foods, tomatoes. For a day or two after eating tomatoes, my tummy swells up and anywhere I sweat itches like crazy. Up until that point, I had blamed my bloating on breads and pastas. Diet as I might, I just couldn't shift the bloating. I was eating salads with tomatoes in them. I was eating soups with tomatoes in them. Every day I was consuming some of these tomatoes. I also started to make my own lotions because I was convinced I was allergic to everything and that when I was sweating, my makeup or my lotion was what was making me itch. Three weeks after removing tomatoes from my diet, 
the itching went away, and it looked like I had lost 20 pounds, despite the fact that I'd really probably lost five pounds. Recently, I realized when I'm having a bad day, my idea of comfort food always has tomato in it. In my emotional upset, I somehow want to punish myself into tomorrow with cravings that lead to unwise food choices. Without this awareness, therefore, my emotional state was affecting my mental state, which in turn caused physical inflammation and distress in my body and its systems. However, when I became mindful of all four aspects of health, the emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical, I began to clearly see the domino effect happening, and I can try to stop it in its tracks. I'm not always successful, but just noticing it means that I can begin to make a conscious decision rather than unconsciously allowing my emotions to affect my physical body. Choosing instead to create a self-love discipline that respects all these aspects of health. Practicing daily wellness activities like exercise, regular sleeping patterns, meditation, and other stress management techniques, as well as mindful nutrition, all help prevent illness and disease. By incorporating herbs into your diet, you can further prevent ailments and imbalances. Even when viruses such as cold and flu strike, herbs and herbal preparations will help your body heal more effectively. To sum it all up, why should we consider health from a holistic perspective? To get a better view of the whole self and maintain optimum health. Viewing the whole self to determine a well-rounded health and wellness routine that helps you achieve maximum happiness and enhance health and living, as opposed to some of the other breakdowns that you get when you go to a doctor and they send you to a specialist. Herbalism seeks to balance the body. It is my intent to just help people incorporate herbs into their daily lives. The poster you've been looking at has been just some of the herbs that are known for supporting these systems. I hope you enjoyed this course. I've been Cindy Gill, owner of Silly Goose Ranch Herbals. Check us out online, come visit us at shops and fairs. We'll see you soon.